I think it's good for morale, and I think, uh, and people like having a few coins at the beginning to play with. Uh, yeah, as well. it doesn't break the game. No, it doesn't. If it ever does, I'll modify it. <laughs> but so far, it's been working really well. Also, if I get real close to a roll, and I really want that roll to make, I might throw a couple coins out. So Ooh, I can, okay. We tried that last game session. I did I like it twice. That. I'm not going to do it very often. I'm going to have to be super close to the roll. So it's there's going to be a lot of back and forth with the coins. I think it'll it'll give you guys a little more control. Um, I'm not going to allow coins to be used for sanity checks. You can't fix keep from you can't change a sanity check. All right. But I will allow them to be used for the idea check to see if you go temporarily insane. But reroll coupons trump everything, right? Reroll coupons, yeah. You can reroll no matter what. Sure. Um, and um, and I will give coins if you're really close to like critical fails, like I did with John last summer. If you're willing to take a critical fail and you roll a 97 or a 98, you need a zero zero. But I can give you some. If you want, you can have some coins and critical fail something. Nice. People are less happy about taking that, unfortunately. But I think it's a good deal. If you're gonna fail, might as well fail hard. Heck yeah! Uh, All right, so sorry, I totally just. So yeah, it's so scandalous. think what you think. Scandalous. So I think what I want to think. Yeah, uh, well, you said it was scandalous. Yeah, he's obviously involved. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't believe that. As, as a man as wealthy as yourself, uh, you must have some suspicions of who it is. There are a few lawmen who are probably on the take. I think so. I do. Do you have their names? I don't have enough information to. To give their names yet. But when I do, I can contact you if you give me information on contacting you. Yeah, we could probably work that out. I'll see you, Secretary, on the way out. Um, Very good. Is that all? Well, I did have some questions for you. Uh, oh, I yeah. don't know how I could help with this I don't know. kind of thing. I don't know how much the paper got into it, but Jack Parker was was uh, very helpful. Uh, after I apprehended him, he ah. gave a lot of information. That's good. <laughs> the more, the better. <laughs> Sweat beating down his board. No, he's not sweating at all. Oh, he okay. looks like really confident. Right he's now. maybe been, he's maybe been in this situation before. <laughs> where he's been in a well, he's a robber baron. He's a terrible person. Uh, he's willing to rip off anybody he can to make his money. So yeah, he uh, he had some some notes between John Valentine and a contact here in San Francisco about robbing the. Uh, What's the term called again? Something the Sequoia like? Star. The Sequoia Star. Which, as you know, was <clears throat> the train that I was on with the Crescent, trying to make sure that it got where it needed. No, oh, I didn't know that. Uh, he stands up. Anytime you want to say, make a psychology check to see uh, anything about him, you can, okay? Right. You can just let me know. I was mean, walking just, over to the sideboard, apparently. I've also dealt right. with guilty people. I yeah. know what, like, you know, just randomly standing up, just, you know, <laughs> just trying he finished to his, have... he's, got, he's just refreshing his drink. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly yeah. That's all he's doing. He's walking over. He gestures towards your glass, which, yeah, I've how much have you drank? Okay. He picks that up and goes back over. I want to, like, I'm not, like, watching him pour it, but yeah. I do want to kind of, like, maybe. Keep an eye. Yeah. yeah he's got his back to you, but you. he does not, he does not cover up. The stuff. So he's like, it's like this, and here's the drink, and he's like this. You know what I mean? Right. So you can see the drinks. He's further away than this, but you can see the drinks, but his back is completely to you. He pours from the same. Yeah, same decanter. Oh, he okay. pops it open. He pours a little in each one, closes it back up, picks them both up. Uh, his hands don't go anywhere suspicious. You know, he doesn't like. He doesn't. He doesn't go like. <laughs> well, right here you, know, you go. Yeah, he doesn't do anything like that. He just picks it up and he brings you over a glass and he puts it down on the. Did you ever sit down? Where are you in the room when you had this conversation? I would say that it was perusing the office, right? all this other stuff, and then about the time that I say, so you heard about Jack Parker, I, that's when I'm coming over to the desk, I see the newspaper on his desk, and I sit down. He sat down. So he puts down the drink in front of you on the desk. Yeah. Uh, he's going to remain standing. He's going to stand over kind of this side of the, the, the desk as he is drinking now. Uh, kind of glances out the window. There's a nice view. Uh, it's cold out, but it's a pretty day. All right. There you go. So... He handed over some documents to me that I do not think will take very long for me to find the origin of who the writer is. But I wanted to. You have an idea? Not the more. None at all. No, I came to you because I do understand that the Crescent was your property. Indeed, it was. And it should it be my property. You found? Did you? You found him? Did you find the Crescent? I would be willing to pay for its return. Well, I'm sure you would. $50,000. That's five Jack Parkers. <laughs> <laughs> well, that 
what you're saying? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you're you quip. He's trying to lighten the situation. He laughs a little too loudly. And he says, yes, Marshal, if you bring it to me, it's worth that much. Well, but the government says it's their property. The government thinks they own everything in this country, don't they? Yes. The ground beneath our feet. You can't even own a piece of property without the government claiming that it's theirs. Money talks. And if you bring me the crescent, it will be worth a great deal of money to you. Now, to me, and it will be a great deal of money for you. What do you want the crescent for so bad? It has certain qualities that I wish to explore further. What if I told you that on my trip back to San Francisco, Jack Parker told me that he doesn't think anyone should investigate those properties of the Crescent. It has fully changed this man. Well, he is a criminal, after all. Yes, but I would advise you to maybe go see him in the jail and see how much it can change a man before you try to investigate something I don't think you quite understand for. Oh, I understand. Oh. I understand quite well. And I need it. Do you know where it is? I wish I did, but I do not. Right, now I'm going to give him a little psychology check. I don't have stats for this, guys. What's the min on your character sheet for psychology? For Five. Six. Ten. Alright, I'm gonna make him give him twenty. He would he would have learned to read yeah. people. Okay. Go ahead. He doesn't he doesn't freak out. You're lying or anything like that. <laughs> no, uh he apparently believes you. But I just not. wanted to come here to see if you knew who contacted John Valentine to rob the Sequoia Star. I am not one for allegations or you know to apprehend somebody without hard evidence, but the Crescent was your property. Your property was taken, lawfully or not, depends on how you see it or which side of the line you play. And then the Sequoia Star is robbed. Now, if I was a betting man, I'd say that the person who would try to get the Sequoia Star robbed, number one suspect will be you. Oh. I'll take a, I'll take a You've point. got, you have not even touched the new glass, so you yeah. got, you could, you want to down it? It's, it's a couple fingers. It's a yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll just you down, down it. Thing, yeah. You put it down on the, t- on the back down on the desk. Who yeah. else would benefit from the star being robbed? Well, that's quite an accusation, Marsh. Yeah, well, we're just but hypothetical. I problems. hate to disappoint. He walks over like towards your glass again. Uh huh. And he goes, so, I won't disappoint you. I said, what he does, he grabs you by the shirt, and he literally goes, mm, and you go fucking flying across the room, okay? Um, you need that check. If you fail, you're going to take a point of damage as you crash into the fucking wall, okay? Uh, 23 out of 60. Uh, yeah, okay. You literally slam against a wall and, and crash to the ground. Uh, uh... Uh, and then he's <laughs> heading for you, like, and he's moving faster than you've ever seen anybody move. Holy shit, okay? here we go. <laughs> okay. Um, he knows the crescent. His dex is actually, he's going to trump you for dex, because he is pumped right now. So we're going to say so Roth, and we're going to say uh, uh, Pierce. Um, cool. And what he does is he gets to you very quickly, and he grabs you again by the shirt. You're a little stunned by your flight. Because you went from about, the desk is here, you went from about here to where that wall is uh, in real life. Uh, you are, you get the breath knocked out of you. And what he does is he reaches down and grabs your gun. And yeah. he just like flings it out of the, right. of the holster. That's all. He, and, and he lifts you up with one fucking arm and pushes you against the wall. And he goes, do you understand the power of that thing? I only touched it for a few moments. And look what it's given me. I've never felt more alive or stronger or healthier. Now, if you want to, if you want to act. So uh, he's not like choking you. No, no, he's got you by this the shirt of your vest. But he's got you up so you're on your tiptoes. And right now he's just like yelling in your face. Now, I, I you could punch him. I need to get in the or, right mentality right now is what I need that's to fine. do. This kind of uh, took me a little bit by surprise. It should have. Uh, you, this guy is 60, 65 years old. There's no way he should have been able to throw you or put you up like he's doing. But right now, he appears to be... Uh, it just looks... I, I, yeah, okay. 
What do you want to do? This it's your it's your action. I'm he's, he's gotten rid of your gun. It's across the room somewhere in a corner. I'm putting my words together a little bit because I know what I want to say. Mm-hmm. I'm having trouble putting it together. We're gonna to make this kind of cinematic combat, so rounds aren't necessarily super short. Right. Depending on what you want to try to do. <sighs> Crescent is not. I'm gonna like kind of like hold his arm because mm-hmm. I mean obviously, it's like holding on to a steel. Yeah, he's like holding me up. Yeah. Power of the crescent is not what you think it is. If you are exposed to it <laughs> for too long, it will swallow you whole. What it has done to you now has made you a stronger individual, but I promise you, you do not know its full potential. It has given me a new life. <laughs> <laughs> Flings you. That table that's on this side. So the actual. So we've been kind of doing like this for the bar, but it's actually been this side. Uh, the sideboard's here with the bar. The table is here against that far wall. You go flying across and you crash onto that table. Give me another dex check. Again, for a point of damage. This is kind of a, like I said, cinematic combat. He's not really trying to hurt you. He's flinging you around the room. Oh, nine. May, okay, yeah, you crash onto this, and he is zipping across the room towards you at speed. You don't know where your gun is. So I also know, like, right now, too, this man could easily kill me. Like, he could have just, like, he could have just easily been like, I don't want to disappoint yeah, from the looks of him, he's stronger than any man you've ever known. Uh, but he's not killing me. He, yeah, you don't know why. What's going on? He's throwing me. He's around. grinning like a like a maniac. Right. Um. So what do you want to do? As How he, close am I to my gun? Uh, you don't see it. You don't know where he threw it. He talked. Uh, he threw it in the room somewhere. But then he he's been tossing you around. So what do you want to do? These are loud commotions, too. It is a loud commotion. Obviously. But you locked the door. I did lock the door. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for locking the door, by the way. Okay. <laughs> uh, so I'm on the desk, and he's coming. You're on the table. The desk is here. Okay, he's coming to me again. Yes, with, with uh, superhuman speed. It's ridiculous how fast he moves. The desk is where the whiskey is. Okay, so the whiskey's over here in the sideboard. Okay. This table that he threw you is over here. Uh, it was probably like a table meant to be used for extra paperwork and shit. And the desk is here. And those are the main things in the room. There is a, there's, there's pokers and implements by the fireplace, which is against that wall near the door that you just came in. How heavy is this table? Ah, it's big. Every, it's all big. the furniture in this room is like heavy, because the heavier the furniture is, the more expensive it is. So, it's a big table. I mean, my, I think my guy's a little dazed right now, so I think That's I'm, fine. I'm just gonna like, Tip the table over, like, in between us? Like, try and, like... Okay, so you roll somewhere. over, like, on the other side of the... The table's <coughs> just this side of the wall. So you flip over, the, and then you're going to try to flip the table. Okay, um... I'm just trying to uh, gain some time. Give me a dex check. If you make it, that gives you enough time to do both. You know what I mean? Do a backflip over the table, and then move. Oh, wait. Oh, god damn. Okay, give me a strength check, check to flip the table. Uh, give yourself a bonus die. Which means you roll your... Yeah, you roll your ten dice twice a day. You go. Perfect. Okay, I'm gonna go with the O4. Fuck, O4, yeah, without even much effort, you're boom! The table flips over. Uh, and, uh, and he comes over the table at you. Just jumps it? Yeah, he leaps it like, the table is probably this high, you know, cause it was about three feet wide, so, and he just, just nimbly is over the table, grabs you again, and he's like, I've never enjoyed myself so much! And then he flings you again, and this time you crash into his desk, he's in papers flying, yeah. uh, and he's coming for you again. Oh, give me another dex check. So far, you really haven't been hurt yeah. physically by this. It doesn't feel great. No, you're... Well, oh, too? We're, oh, I'm damn. using all these now? You're in a great deal of pain, but there's no physical damage that's like, you're going to die. That's Until this guy really yeah. starts, like, either wailing on you or starts to decide to choke you to death or really, guess, really wants to hurt you. Uh, it doesn't look like I'm going to be able to gain, like, any time slash room away from this man. So no. I'm going to do a spot hidden to try to find my... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do me spot hidden. See if I can at least know where the that's oh, five. Well, I'm gonna roll all these great wow. numbers, and then okay. when it gets to combat, it's, it's in the far corner of the room. You're on the desk here. It's all the way over in the far corner of the room, and he's between you and it right now. Am I closer to the whiskey now? The whiskey's over here against the wall. Uh, so uh, I'm gonna try and like fling whiskey in his face at some point. Okay. Um, but if I'm too you were, far, from you were looking around this round for the uh, yeah. next round. You can try to get to it. Uh, he's on top of you again. And this time, uh, this time, he starts, like, doing like this. He grabs you by the pills and goes, bam, bam. And he's like, you don't, but, uh, let me know spot him real quick. And give yourself a bonus die on this, because it's going to be hard to miss. Well, it's a 30, but we Is that a success? Yeah. We roll that, that's cocked. Okay. Yeah, but if they're both success, that's fine. Yeah. Um, he's got these real dark, uh, under his eyes. You don't 
was that there before? And his face feels, it seems like it's kind of like sunken against his skull. That doesn't look the same either. Mm. Uh, and his hair was like perfect before, like, it looks like this. And now it's gotten a little disheveled, but it also looks like it's really thin, and it appears to be wider. Uh-oh. Uh, and then he goes, boom, boom, and he's telling you, you do not understand the power of the crescent. And then you know the deck steps, see if it hurts you. He seems like he's toying with you. He's not really hurting you yet, but you expect he's going to soon. I'm still all right. Jesus. Okay. So boom, boom, boom. Uh, what do you want to do? He's on top of you, holding you down, and just banging you against his desk. There's a knock at the door. Is everything okay in there? <laughs> um, I think I'm just going to try to like use all my strength just to maybe... Get away from him. Okay, yeah, push him off. Yeah. We'll do a strength versus strength. So give me strength check. His is 300. His strength is quite high right now. 20 out of 65. He did not get, like, uh, an extreme. So 20 out of 65 is a hard yeah, but success. Uh, he did not get even a hard. He got a regular success. So you give him a shove, and he stumbles backwards. We're going to bump um, into the gun. Um, oh, and then you run over to the gun. Oh, good idea. Okay. Uh, you run over to the gun. And you can snatch it up. You won't be able to fire it this round. Yeah. But you can get it in your hand, and sp- at, you spin around and point it at him. Uh, he's coming at you, but he's a lot slower. Before, he was like, and he was across the room. And now he's moving slower, and he stumbles. And now you realize, yes, something is wrong with this guy. His skin is all gone. He's gone all pale. His skin is all really tied up against his skull. Can I um, yeah, yeah, you can say something. But it's got to be fair. Uh, we're cinematic, so... That'd be fairly short. You can't have a huge monologue, but you can you can say something to him. What? Like, because uh, I'm just gonna be like, I've noticed that he's like basically fading. Something's right wrong. Yeah. You see his hairs literally falling off of his head. He's like with like like bated breath. I'm just like, how old were you when you found the crescent? Because I'm thinking like the crescent is like you know giving him new life mm-hmm. and all this other stuff. So like he must have been like really bad when he found it. Um. Okay. He doesn't answer. He's like gasping, mm-hmm. and he starts to. <clears throat> And you see, like, uh, something is, like, falling out from, from his pant legs. It looks like dust oh. or dirt or something. And he stumbles towards you, and, and he kind of lurches towards you. He's still pretty far away. He's eight or nine feet away. And this arm just falls, and then you hear, like, a rattle. And, and out of his cuff comes, uh, like, a skeletal arm with a hand attached. And you, even as you watch the, uh, like the, the flesh and the, the muscle and everything, it's just, like, kind of turning to dust. And, and he stumbles to his knees, and, um, and then he just falls forward flat on his face. Um, shit. Uh, make me sanity check. This is pretty funny. Yeah, I thought, uh, I thought he was just losing the power. I didn't think he was fucking dying. So, uh, sanity check? Yes, please. Uh, 40, wait, hold on. 47 out of, oh man, the sanity's good now. 87. Uh, okay, you lose a point of sanity. That's, that's horrific, but you're just like, uh, and, um, and even as you watch, like, everything, like, all of his hair has fallen out and it's kind of disappeared. It's kind of, like, turned to dust. Uh, and there's nothing left but a skull. And even as you watch, the skull just kind of crumbles uh, as there's another knock at the door. Boop, 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 boop. What's going on in there? Uh, you you the the secretary. You heard the voice of the secretary. Uh, there's a suit on the ground. And it looks like it's just full of, just there's just dust sticking out of where the hand was, where the head was. Uh, it, and it, as you watch, it just kind of it shivers, and then the whole thing just kind of like deflates. You know what I mean? Like he has just crumbled. <laughs> Is everything okay? Hello? That's what you hear from outside. I am. I don't really want to lie to her, but. Well, you didn't shoot, and yeah. there's a pile of dust inside this guy's clothes. Yeah. It's not like you hurt this guy. Wall's got it under control, man. Okay, her. you can say that. I don't want her to get anybody else involved, at least. I mean, uh, rattle, rattle, rattle. Yeah. Somebody on the other side. <laughs> Sounds like flustered or something. Yeah. Uh, I'm going Mr. Rothschild, are you I'm all right? I'm going to walk over to the suit and just kind of uh, nudge it with my foot. <laughs> uh, uh, it, it feels like it's full of dirt or sand or dust. Uh, like, you know, you push up against it and it stays pushed in. You know, that, it this is pretty weird for my character to see, so I'm also just going to, like, lift the suit up and, like, be like, what is... Yeah, there's nothing left but, like, dirt, like, sand, gray sand and dust inside. Like, he has completely been, just fell apart. 
I want to. Now I'll give you an idea check. Oh, if you want it. Yeah, I'll give you an idea check on this. Uh, did you make it? Tell me you made it. I don't think I did. Damn it. Idea is intelligence. So uh, yes. Yeah. No. Nah, okay. Like so you have to think what you will. I think this guy's just done. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. There's nothing left of him. Like, I think. Uh, if you want to examine the suit more carefully, yeah, it's full of. It looks like something you'd find in, like, a mummy's crypt once everything, right. like, fell to complete pieces. Yeah, I mean, my idea is that he. The, the crescent that he touched, I'm thinking he found it when he was, like, pretty old, pretty, pretty well off. Well, you know that. Hey, I'll give you this that he was there at the train when it left LA. He could have dealt with it then. You know what I mean? What are you talking about? That was only a few months ago. Rothschild's well known, and his age you could look up. And oh, find out that like he's only what he looks age. like himself. Yeah, and you find his age is just 65. Uh, he was. Uh, well, could he, couldn't he have found the crescent without us knowing he found the crescent? Uh, you know it's mean? doubtful because it was found by those miners, remember? Uh, they, okay. When they blew up that part of the mine, it was embedded in solid rock. Okay, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You think that that was the first time that anybody ever saw it? Um, but here, I'll give you this for free. It doesn't give you much of an advantage. It almost appears that the power that he got from the crescent mm. consumed him. Yeah, I was I was going more around like the idea that like yeah, he just like he had power and it was like it was good, but then he just like used it all up and then he kind of just yeah. There you go. Oh yeah. Okay, so, oh man, that sucks. Uh, <laughs> Not really, he's a terrible let's, person. Uh, let's search his suit. <laughs> okay, yeah, well, there's a wallet. Uh, there's a bunch of money in it. There's probably like $300. Uh, identification, um, that kind of stuff. I hate that I play a law abiding federal marshal. Because, mm -hmm. man, that, you know, I've got 10 you got grand. 10 grand. But, yeah, like another 300. Did you yeah. write 10 grand in your savings? Well. Add 10 grand to your savings. Give yourself five points of credit rating, too. Nice. You Wait, have, only five. You, well,. Credit rating also affects like how much money you make and all it's that. It's not really that's a right. savings part. There's a there's it's a cash, cash, there's spending level, and then there's assets. Assets. It goes in assets. I don't remember what at, my add it to your what's your assets. You probably been why are your assets though? Are you sure that's not forty five hundred dollars? No, I'm pretty sure that's at forty five dollars. Okay. Well, there's ten thousand grand or ten thousand in the in the bank now. Yeah, it's not like it matters. I have ten thousand now. I'm just, I'm gonna say it was forty five dollars. Okay. Because I don't, I don't think I have forty five hundred assets. So it's not your assets should be. Uh, what is your asset? Hold on, we'll look it up real quick. We got ten. It's just two of us. Because uh, I don't have a lot. I mean, I have a nice horse. Your assets should be your your uh, credit rating. What is your credit rating? Before? Yes, twenty. So your assets would have been your credit rating times twenty five. Oh, so it was. So it was. It was forty. What'd you say you're at? What, what'd you say your credit rating so was? 20, 20, 20 times 25. Yeah, would be you're way calculator. 450. 20 times 25. Yeah. $500. So yeah, you probably have 450 bucks okay. in there. So add that much to your 10,000 that you just need. 10,450. <laughs> Whatever. I don't know where that other zero comes from. There. You're rich, bitch. I am. Uh, I'll leave um, the 300 in his wallet. And I identification. Uh, not a whole lot else in the wallet. Mm, let's search his desk. Mm -hmm. I want to see if I can find anything that ties um, him to John Valentine. I'm trying to think if he would put any, leave anything here. Yeah, maybe a luck check. How about that? If you make the luck check, you find something hidden away. 20 out of... Okay, yeah. Uh, hidden in the back of one of the drawers, there's like a little panel you can actually remove. Like a hidden panel? Yeah. And there's a, there's a few notes in there. They're, they're not signed Valentine, they're just signed V. But they do seem to connect him to the train robbery. Okay. Uh, vaguely, since you've already got that in your head, it's just about, yes, we will make this happen. And you'll have what you want, you know, that kind of shit. And you can immediately make the connection. It's vaguely worded, so you don't know if it'd hold up in court or not. But if I um, could but he's have dead, these documents so it doesn't along with the um, words of Parker, right? Yeah. That's but true. the guy's dead. I don't yeah. know. I mean, you could still try well, to... Well, dead to me. No one else knows he's dead. Right, not yet. I could say. They're going to figure it out. <laughs> okay, yeah. yeah. You could. Um, 
It's up to you how you want to handle this. The secretary's gone away from the door, obviously. She's, yeah. she's upset. She's probably getting a different lawman to come over here. And see You're a lawman. Right, You're yeah. a police officer. There was no gunfire. There was no screaming. It was like, ah! or anything like that. So, you don't know how, what she's going to do. Um, that, that door I came in is the only way out. Yeah. Isn't it? It's just yeah. one door that leads out. There's no other doors to this room. Um, yeah. You got a disheveled suit. But there is a window? There are several large windows. Uh, uh, he is on the second floor. He is on the second floor. Yeah, I would assume he'd have a nice office because that's a better view. He'd be on the second floor. You could, you could sneak out if you wanted. No, I know. There's just some things I'm thinking. Did you even give her your name? Yeah. Yeah, that's right, because he knew who you were when you when you came in the door. Yeah, he said it. I just flashed her the badge. I didn't tell her anything. She would have probably asked your name, and then she would have gone into his office. There's no intercoms and shit. And she would have come out, and she said, he'll see you shortly. And then you waited 20 minutes. And then you went in there, and then he turned to dust. That's the synopsis. What else can I search? So the desk probably yielded um, everything I wanted. To yeah, do. there's there's official papers in there. The stuff on the on the top of the desk that was scattered, you can look through. So it I looks like it's I just like mine. Shit. Notes, but yes. is there anything else that's just like ties um, this guy to some shady shit? Oh, uh, oh, there's uh, not really shady, but obviously there's uh, oh there's some letters to uh, uh, there's some receipts for the Pinkerton Detective Agency for uh, for um, uh, surveillance. Mm-hmm. Of uh, someone, I'm gonna need. Yeah, give me. Uh, you got an address where they're surveilling. It's it's on uh, it's in one of the rich neighborhoods here in San Francisco. Uh, and there's some letters uh, that the target has escaped. Oh, uh, it's Telegram. Uh, target has escaped in granite, which you remember in Colorado. It doesn't say Colorado. It just says Target has escaped in granite, mm-hmm. uh, attempting to um, to find. And that one is dated not too long, maybe as long as it would take to get to Granite down to one of the bigger towns that has telegraph offices. Um, further down the line, uh, Los Canos are one of those. Do I recognize the um, address of Steloids? Uh, yes, actually, that's Steloids' address. Uh, apparently, Rothschild hired the Pinkertons to, uh, to monitor him. Is it ongoing? Um, uh, it apparently is. That The last is actually the same time, about... It was about two days after you were in Denver is when that last telegram came. There hasn't been anything since. Uh, earlier telegrams indicate uh, he uh, uh, Target is traveling, uh, seems out of sorts. Uh, uh, they're not signed. Um, uh, they're, uh, yeah, they're not really signed. Um, actually, shit. They would be signed with initials. The initials that they're signed with are MF. Uh, but from, from putting all this paper together, it looks like Rothschild hired some Pinkertons to monitor Steloid. The telegrams are from them following him cross-country, not too long after you guys went cross-country on train from San Francisco to Denver. Uh, and, and then it goes quiet until uh, after the whole John Valentine incident, when another telegram is sent that says that, uh, that he lost the, the target uh, with, and is trying to reacquire, and that's the last telegram that, and that was weeks ago, because uh, that was because right now you're probably mid December, and that was back right after the whole John Valentine incident in mid November. There's how is is there any indication of how he's sending these telegrams? Is he telling his secretary to send these telegrams? Um, no, there's no indication. Probably they go through the secretary. Okay. Um, he's probably got an arrangement with the local telegraph office that when he gets a telegram. They'll actually send it via courier to him. I mean, he's rich, so he can get away with this shit. Um, his secretary may or may not have seen them, or they might have come straight to him. Don't leave that. My dog will eat it. Uh, they might or might not have come straight to him, but they might have gone through the secretary. Uh, none of them are, uh, none of the telegrams he got have actual names. It's all target. It's all signed with just initials, that kind of stuff. It just appears to be one guy that's doing all the communication with him from the telegrams. Um, and same with notes. There are a few notes uh, the same way of the surveillance of the Steloid house. You figure out, again, it's just signed with, a, with, a, uh, with initials. Okay. Um, search that, search that. Um, I don't think there would be anything else. Um, nothing else with Valentine. Uh, nothing, nothing with Twilliger. Okay. Um, because you know he lives just across the bay in Oakland. 
so there's nothing really connecting that. Um, nothing about Ophelia or any of the other people in your group that you've met. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying to think what else he's caught up in. I didn't think to write all this shit down. I didn't think you would search the it's still me. I should have known you would search. Well, I was like, uh, I knew what was going to happen. How you know, you I, I want to definitely get the connecting to Valentine, but I was I was also thinking along the lines of, you know, if he's connected to a bunch of other shady shit, then I can be like, why wouldn't he be connected to Valentine? Yeah. Believe me more. You know? A lot of the stuff that you're finding is vague enough that it would be hard to... It might be stuff I've never even heard of, right. too. It's like, hey, go, um, go here and do this, and I'm like, I don't even know. There, okay, here's what. You, you are getting other indications of people who are looking for the object. The object is what always comes up. Some letters, other telegrams. Again, they're only signed with just initials. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, oh, let's see. Still one was there. There, there is a newspaper article, real short one. Oh, this is the newspaper article about Grant. If you wanted to read it, just FYI. Uh, that you would have been able to see that at some point. It's from the Denver, one of the Denver, Colorado papers. Um, there is another newspaper article about a uh, a murder. It's real short. Um, it, it appears to be from uh, from an Oregon paper about a murder that took place in a town called uh, Grant. Mm-hmm. Oregon, uh, and then there's another newspaper article about an arson that took place in the town called Canyon City, Oregon, uh, and both of these appear to have happened like right at the beginning of October. That yeah, Oregon doesn't have anything to do with uh, Jack Parker. I won't even make you look the, that up. Okay, because uh, Canyon City's on here, so I was like. But there's probably a lot of Canyon Cities. That's very true. Because uh, people named things. I'll let you read that. Oh, this is.